Hey guys and welcome back to yet another video, another episode of Us Cooking. And today I'm about to teach you how we're going to make our air fried chicken. Yes, all you need is your air fryer. If you do not have one, please get your grill ready or your oven ready as this is about to be very simple and very easy for every one of you. As always guys, I appreciate each and every one of you that has subscribed. Don't forget to share this channel. We are on a journey to 1k subscribers and I believe we can make it. One thing guys I know is that where there is a great meal, there is always a perfect dessert to accompany it. And all the way from County 001, we have our own and I will be telling you about him as time goes by. So keep watching, keep liking, keep commenting. So guys, for this recipe, I'll start off by washing two of my chicken and I'll first remove the rent from the chicken. Any that's um, the lower back, the anus, as most of you call it. I'll start by removing it, then I'll wash it in warm water and salt, or you can also use white vinegar. So guys, to marinate my chicken, I decided to poke it through so that the marination can pass through. And uh, if you would like, you can use either a sharp knife or a fork but if your chicken is for tomorrow it's not necessarily a good idea to poke but if you just feel like poking it also it is fine Once done, set your chicken aside so that it can rest for some minutes and uh, while I was setting mine I added uh, some ro dried rosemary so that it can set with it and it can give it all the flavor that it will need. So for my marination I will start off with tomato paste which is totally optional. I'll use chicken masala and cinnamon. These two spices work a bomb. Cinnamon in chicken is actually the secret weapon. And then I'll use paprika, which is totally optional. Then I have one and a half roku cube. I have dark soy sauce. And I also have the simbambili curry powder. If you're a Kenyan, you definitely know the simbambili curry powder is usually a bomb in anything that you're cooking and you just need that curry sauce in it. So we'll add turmeric to just give it color and a bit of flavor. Turmeric and paprika actually work very well. And uh, I'll add uh, mixed herbs since I didn't have my fresh herbs with me. I'll use mixed herbs in the, instead. And then I'll also use salt, but a little bit of salt since we have soy sauce. Why I'm using biryani masala is because I don't have some of my spices. So biryani masala will offer me some of the most of the spices that I will need for this. So I'll use thyme rub which is totally optional and I'll also use coriander and also I'll add a bit of the mixed spice which um, I'll get from the biryani masala also but I'll just need a little bit of it. So here I have a liter of hot water that I had boiled and uh, that I'll be using to soak my chicken in the marination. So guys, for this I also added black pepper which is totally optional. So we'll start by slicing our onions and I'll start by slicing three red onions and I also have three spring onions which are totally optional. And then I have ginger and then I have garlic. So for my ginger and garlic, this is because the paste that I usually make way ahead was over so I had to use these fresh ones. So for garlic it's never enough with me so I only used 8 garlic. You can use as much as you can though. So chop everything up. Forget about the sizes actually because you're going to blend everything together.
once you're done cutting all your onions, your ginger, your garlic, kila kitu yani ukishamaliza kukata kata, utaitia kwenye blender so you'll add everything in your blender and then we'll start off by adding our half teaspoon of salt and for the rest of the spices we are actually going to put 2 teaspoon each for all the spices apart from black pepper. This is because it's totally optional and I didn't want too much chili in my sauce since I have all that spice in. So guys to my spices I am also going to juice one lemon which is totally optional for you if you do not like lemon please uh, it's not a must to put it in and then one hack I usually do with my tomato paste I usually add sugar this actually helps with the acidity in uh, tomato paste because it is high in acid and then it kind of gives you gas in your stomach so sugar actually reduces it and lemon actually uh, gives it kind of a tanginess feel in your mouth Once done add about a cup of hot water that we had made earlier and bring everything to a smooth blend Once your marination has come to a smooth blend, now prepare your bowls for the marination. I'll use about 3 quarter cup of the marination in each and every bowl since I'm marinating my chicken separately. And for the remaining marination, I'll just pour them in tins and set them in my fridge for later use. Once ready, cut your chicken that has been resting with the rosemary leaves. Just cut it very well in the marination and then to remove the excess marination now, you'll have to soak your chicken with the hot water that was uh, in our jug before and then you'll have to turn your chicken breast facing down so that the breast can soak all the juice in. Since it has a lot of meat, it will take time to soak. So you have to put the breast facing down. Before I cover my chicken, I usually want to test if my salt level is okay and if not, I usually prefer adding soy sauce. Once done, I usually cover my chicken with a clean thing and then I follow it up with a piece of cloth so that it can rest and all the air can be uh, well marinated inside for about an hour. So as your chicken is marinating, let me explain to you why we have Maxwell cakes all the way from Mombasa with us. This is because this guy is talented guys. He not only uh, deals with cake but also deals with food and charity work. This corona period has been doing a lot of charity work in his store. And remember any purchase you make at Maxwell's store goes out to charities that need it, goes out to children's home and the needy people in the street this during this period. So please support them by calling them on 0702-147-802. By the way, they not only deal with birthday cakes and wedding cakes, they also deal with anniversary cakes, they have cupcakes, and they also have a baking class, you guys. You better check them out. So guys, our chicken has been resting for about an hour and now we are ready to put in our Vaughn air fryer. I want you to look at this chicken carefully so that you know when your marination is ready. It will actually change color. It will actually take the color of the marination. That way you'll know your chicken is now ready for cooking. So we'll put our chicken breast down and we'll add a little bit of the marination in it, about a quarter cup so that it can steam with it and then for the remaining marination we are not throwing it away. This will actually make a glaze 
for the chicken. Trust you me. So guys, once you're ready, put your chicken in your air fryer, set your timer and also your degrees because uh, this air fryer, you'd think it works like an oven, but guys, you'll have to go back and uh, check your chicken and also uh, turn the side so that it can be cooked through. It's not like an oven that will cook your chicken all through. And also if you're using a grill, just keep, keep turning your chicken. So guys to our marinade we shall create a paste from that that will be used to glaze our chicken. So we took both the marination and put them in a sufferia and bring your marination to a boil. Remember to use a big sufferia guys and you'll know this when you see what happened to mine. So guys, once your sauce has come to a boil, give it a little bit of a stir and we shall thicken the sauce using half a cup all-purpose flour, half a cup sugar or honey for those who don't want sugar, two tablespoons tomato paste, this is totally optional, and one tablespoon baking powder. And you'll have to add all this simultaneously because the faster it is, the better the sauce will be for you. Once you add in your all-purpose flour, you will notice that it will be lumpy but do not worry because once we add everything else, we shall wait for our sauce to cool so that we can blend it to a smooth paste. Okay guys, now once you add in your baking powder, you will notice that your paste will start to form and rise really rapidly. So at this point, reduce your heat and then stir continuously. And once your paste comes to a uh, cool, now you can add it to your blender and then now you can uh, blend it to a smooth paste. As you can see here, that's why I told you I needed a big sufferia because everything of mine was coming to a waterfall.
Once blended, return your paste to the sulfuria and uh, reduce it further, as you can see. So uh, now we are ready to paste our chicken, guys. So ready, we have to check on our chicken. And once satisfied with how your chicken has cooked, you can actually serve it at this point the way it is without the glaze and just have the glaze as a dip. So guys, we'll start with the breast side first since this side usually takes time to actually absorb all the sauce that uh, we'll put on it. And actually I always prefer uh, adding some of the sauce inside the chicken since uh, when it's actually uh, becoming crispy on the outside, the sauce on the inside makes the chicken moist and that is what will help the chicken become even softer. So guys, once our chicken has cooked on this side, remember our heat is still at the 60 mark. So uh, we are just checking our chicken after every 10-20 minutes intervals. So uh, once it is ready, we just uh, repeat the glaze on the back side of the chicken and repeat the same process with your second chicken also. What I actually like about this air fryer, once you remove the basket, it actually turns off uh, the timer immediately until you return the basket the timer will come back on as you can see it is red there and it will continue cooking something you need to note uh, you need to remove the residue that was in the chicken before you start glazing actually I forgot to show you that part I just remember to insert that clip so uh, our first chicken is ready and as you can see you can wrap it in a foil or put it in a hot pot to serve it later. If you have guests then you can serve it then and if you have hungry people you can serve it. So both our chickens are ready and I am going to show you how one of them looks like. So uh, when we turn our chicken on the other side you will actually see all the juiciness from the inside how I was exactly telling you about it. And it was really soft here that I had to just pull the leg off and the chest off and also remove all the um, uh, boneless pieces and set them aside for somebody who don't want bones in their chicken. I decided to serve mine with the uh, pasta as you can see you can just go with any side of your choice I've listed them there and there are so many sides that you can go with this chicken so some of you actually requested me to show my face and I actually had to show my face the way I was enjoying the chicken and see there it is literally falling out of the bone by itself once again, don't forget to contact uh, Maxwell Cakes for all your baking classes and all your birthday cakes. As usual, don't forget to subscribe and comment down below once you try this recipe. I love you all.